Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got myself in this situation. In the middle of a gigantic cave filled to the brim with lava. Well, surprisingly, that's not exactly an uncommon occurrence in Neuter. But to explain this, it's best if I start at the beginning. At the very beginning. The first time I heard of Neuter was when I aimlessly scrolled around my YouTube homepage and stumbled across a video called Neuter, a roguelike for the mentally deranged. And since I'm a huge fan of the roguelike genre and felt personally addressed by the title, I of course had to click. The video describes the game as if an arsonist asking himself how he can make the most painful experience possible. A statement which I will later find out to be 100% true and then goes on explaining the many ways to die in this game. It's hilarious, go watch the video after this one if you haven't already, I'll link it in the description. After I finished the video I was hooked, I mean I played Hades, entered a gungeon, dead cells and a ton of other roguelikes. I'm sure I'm more than prepared to throw a few spells at some weirdly named monsters, right? Oh how wrong I was. And so I decided to play 100 days of Neuter to see if it's really that hard. Now since the game technically doesn't have a day and night cycle as you would normally see in those kinds of 100 days videos, I will count every attempt as a new day since you begin each round waking up by your campfire. And waking up obviously implies that it's a new day, right? Also since the game is pretty complex and half the fun is figuring out how everything works, I decided to not look up any guides, wikis or whatever since, you know, I want to discover what the game has to offer by myself. Even if that means dying over and over and over again. So with the baseline of the challenge established, let's get into it. Neuter has a few game modes to choose from, like the daily practice run where the seed stays the same for 24 hours or the nightmare mode which pumps the difficulty up even more. But the game mode that I will be playing is simply called New Game, which is apparently the original Neute experience. After loading into the game, the first thing I do is check which ones I have. I mean, I have absolutely no idea what all these stats mean, but at least I can pretend to. And after randomly firing some spells, I head into the mountain. There I encountered my first enemy, a zombie-like creature named Haikor Hurta. Yeah, the names are all in Finnish, so I won't even bother to try and call them by their real names. After two shots, I killed the zombie, making it my very first victim in Neuter. Now, that wasn't too hard. I then go on wandering around, being extra careful and shooting down ominous objects from a safe distance. And as you can see here in the background, while I fight the poison jellyfish, things have started to catch on fire. That's because every single pixel in Neuter is simulated. Wood pixels can start to burn, water pixels can wet things and extinguish fires, and even the smallest pixel of lava, acid, poison or whatever can and will kill you. Speaking of which, shortly after I nearly fell into a vat of acid chasing a gold nugget. I then went on to explore the mines further, killing everything in my way and sure I lost a little bit of health in the process, but other than that it was pretty smooth sailing. At least until I came across this guy here, a poison cloud spewing jellyfish spawning bigger jellyfish. Now killing it wasn't the hard part, I basically just stood there and fired spells at it from a safe distance. The problem was retrieving the gold it had dropped. There they laid. Five juicy nuggets all dipped in deadly poison. So I did the responsible thing and just let them expire. And then for some godforsaken reason, I wish I could remember why, I decided to carefully walk up to the corpse. Just barely touching it, which of course causes it to explode, killing me pretty much instantly with all the acid it had left in its body. Well, that was something I didn't see coming, but hey, up to this point the game didn't seem that hard, so off to run number 2. Which started off pretty much like the first one, I delved into the cave, killed some enemies and even found a fancy new wand that shoots saw blades. Yeah, remember when I said earlier that every pixel could kill you? Well of course I managed to get myself unalived from my own saw blade that bounced off a wall. But hey, at least I took the enemy with me. Ok, time to focus. I just need to make sure I don't die by my own hands and I should be fine. And as you can imagine, I was not fine. On my next run I managed to get the sawbread wand again, this time making sure not to stand near any walls while shooting. Conveniently it was located right next to the portal which allowed me to leave the first area. Every time you manage to get to a portal in Neuter, you get teleported to a safe room where you can heal yourself and replenish all spells. There's also the opportunity to buy new wands and spells with the gold you've collected throughout the run and at the end of the room you get to choose from one of three random passives. 
I took the one that spawns a tentacle upon taking damage, simply because it sounded fun. The next area of the game is called the Cold Pits. It introduces some new enemy types such as the Goo Bat and the Lava Bee, but as far as difficulty goes, I felt it wasn't much harder than the first area and I was able to find the next portal pretty quickly. I then bought this new wand with a ping pong pattern at the shop because I thought it could come in handy and went to look at the perks. Which all sounded a bit sus. Like the one here which lets the corpses of enemies explode. That sure sounds like a fun perk that has absolutely no drawbacks at all and wouldn't kill you, right? Or how about the one that lets you bleed poisonous gas? You know what, the corpse one actually sounds fine. Let me grab that. The third area are the snowy depths. And this is where the difficulty really starts to ramp up. At least in my opinion. There are now flying soldiers with a bazillion range, turrets that are as sturdy as a tank, snipers and more. After making my way through some enemies, I find a wand that spawns tentacles similar to the one I create when getting hurt and instantly damage myself with it. So let's just not use this one like ever again. By now the game got me so paranoid that I even mistrust an innocent snowman. But all in all I was feeling confident. You know, I had some good ones, my health was at 50. What's the worst that could happen? Acid. The worst thing that could happen was some random jellyfish coating me in acid and me being unable to get rid of it. To be fair, the acid just nearly killed me. It was the soldier who just simply flew over, shot one bullet and left who delivered the final blow. Okay, maybe Noita really isn't as easy as I thought at the beginning. Maybe... Who am I even kidding? Of course Noita is hard as balls and to underscore this statement, here are some of my deaths over the next few runs. Blowing myself up with exploding rocks, randomly teleporting in front of an enemy, getting my escape route blocked by a huge explosive crate, touching a single pixel of fire while at one health, burning to death in the safe zone because I got stuck on a rock that was just lying around, exploding, drowning, freezing, burning while being surrounded by acid gas, oppenheimering myself. At this point I began doubting if the developers even want the players to succeed. But then, at around attempt 60 or so, it happened. What started as a pretty standard run completely changed when I found the invisibility perk after the first biome. The way that it works is that I'm completely invisible to enemies as long as I don't take any damage or get any stains like blood, acid or whatever on me. If I do, I become visible for as long as I'm stained and once I'm clean again, I'll return to invisibility after a short period. At first I thought nothing special of it and tried fighting my way through the next area as I usually would just with the added bonus of always striking first and picking the battles on my own terms. But as I picked up the teleport on damage perk in the next safe room, I realized, wait, I don't have to fight. I can literally make my way to the next portal without fighting. I mean, just look at all the enemies ignoring me even though I stand right next to them. And so Noita turned from a frantic spell slinging action roguelike to a stealth game where I avoid any confrontation and environmental hazard like a coward. With that strategy I was able to get past the ice biome without any problems and found out that there's actually a reward chest for not killing any enemies. So you see, the game even incentivizes the playstyle. Next up is the easy base. An area full of tight corridors, very few open spaces and an absolute miserable place if you play normally because you can and will blow yourself up if you got a more potent wand. Luckily that's not something I have to worry about since all I have to do is just walk past everyone. Unfortunately though there are puddles of water and oil randomly scattered across the ground that are very easy to miss and turn me visible for a short time but with the age old strategy of running away like a little bitch I was able to get to the next portal fairly easy. There I picked up the one extra life perk. Invisibility and an extra life as safety net? Hell yeah! No way I'm not gonna beat the game on this run. For my pacifist reward I got some extra life and with all that under my belt I went on to the underground jungle. An area I have never been before and apparently my eyes had trouble focusing. Do I know what that means? No. Is it important to know? Maybe if we're playing the game as intended. But I didn't have to bother with such things and noticed nothing different to the previous biomes. So to not bore you with the details let's make this quick and skip this one because I basically just leisurely strolled to the next portal 
again. In the safe room I noticed a drastic price hike of the wands and since I'm not killing any enemies, like ever again apparently, I figured I could as well spend my last remaining gold to reroll the available perks and got me the one that spawns tentacles upon taking damage again. I then experimented a bit with some spells on my loadout, something that could very easily kill me in this game as I just realized, and went on to enter the vault, where I immediately was greeted by a projectile to my face because I needed to kick some crates to the side. And after some panicking and waiting for my invisibility to turn on again, yes I know I'm very brave, I realized that this area, if I wouldn't have my invisibility, would be hard. Like really hard. Even with invisibility, I had to watch out where I was going because the environmental hazards were turned up by a lot. But nonetheless, I managed to make my way through the vault carefully, one step at a time, like a little wuss. And once again, the prices for spells increased. I mean, come on, 2900 gold for the dynamite spell? You can get this shit for free at the beginning of your run. But at least I got a strong wand that shoots extremely strong rockets from the pacifist chest. The next area was the Temple of Art. And I could immediately tell by the vibe and the scary looking monsters that this has to be the final biome before the final boss. This is also where my strategy began to fall apart and was really difficult to pull off. I pretty much immediately got poisoned, thus becoming visible, and attacked by enemies. Luckily my random teleportation perk saved my ass and I was able to escape. Just to be teleported again a few seconds later right in front of more enemies. And then again... And again! This whole time I was in absolute panic mode, because I had no idea what any of the monsters did. And I knew I would never again be able to get this far into the game. So I had to survive. Oh, and did I mention there are traps now? I didn't realize what hit me at the time, but looking back at the footage now, yeah, there it is. Fun times. And also, what's that supposed to be? A giant translucent amoeba? Not to mention the giant fucking ghost worm of death. I knew I needed to get out of here as soon as possible. Which luckily I managed somehow even with my pants now permanently stained. And after jumping through the glowing red portal of doom, which to be honest I wasn't 100% sure if it would kill me or not, I was finally in the last safe room. I chose another teleportation on damage passive which also reduced incoming damage and left, ready as one can be. I felt really optimistic, I mean I had some powerful wands, perks that teleported me to safety before and after I get hit, some that reduced damage or spawned a tentacle and even an extra life if everything went to shit. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? After reaching the end of the ominous hallway, I saw him, the final boss, just standing there tinkering with whatever that gear shaped thing is. And so I gathered all of my courage and triggered the fight. Come on call me Zilme, show me what you've got. The fight started and everything went just as intended. I immediately shot some rockets in his face and then tried to build some distance between him and myself as he began shooting projectiles, fireballs and whatnot. But nothing was able to hit me since I always got teleported away just in time. Perfect. He then closed in on me while spawning little flying versions of himself, but I don't care, the days of hiding in the shadows are over, no more will I run away and avoid confrontation, no more will I keep my weapons sheathed, it's time to show him what a true champion of Noita is made of. Oh my god, what was that? Why am I surrounded by lava? Why is my extra life gone? How do I get out of here? And I'm dead. Yep, that's how my run ended. Let's rewind a bit and see how exactly I got fucked. You see, up until here I was fine, I would even say I was doing great. But then as he approached me, I was forced to move to the left, right through him and the ads he spawned. Which wouldn't be that big of a deal, but of course he didn't stop attacking me. And due to the nature of my perks, I got teleported back to his right side, just as I was about to get hit by a projectile. And then once more after I nearly made my way past the ads. Unfortunately though, I don't get to choose where I get teleported to, and so I landed right on top of him just as he was casting some explosion or something. And since that doesn't seem to count as a projectile, my second teleportation perk got triggered. The one I just picked up before the fight, which instead of teleporting me just a short distance to the side or something like the other perk, decided that the safest place right now in the entire map would be a freaking pool of lava. Thank you. I feel so much safer now. And well, then I died, my extra life got used and I got teleported again, this time on top of the lava pool. But since I had nowhere to go and my stamina ran out, yeah, 
I died for real this time. I still can't believe it. The last perk that I picked up doomed the entire run. And all I could do for some time was just stare at my corpse in disbelief. And for those of you interested, here are the stats. It took me 43 minutes to get to the boss and it was on attempt 63. Unfortunately, that was also the only time I managed to get all the way to the final boss. I did manage to get lucky and find the invisibility perk in a later run, but this time I couldn't make it past the third biome. So yeah, what have you learned in 100 runs of Neuter? Well, not much apparently, because on the 100th run, I managed to kill myself while testing out a new wand in the safe room. Man, I love this game. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Bye.